All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to do 4.8, which is the quadratic formula and discriminants. All right, so that's going to be our topic of discussion today. The objective is to learn one more method for solving a quadratic and then we're going to talk about some graphical solutions all right so those are your topics for the day one more method for solving a quadratic and then your graphical solutions so let's review for a minute and talk about all the different ways that we have solved quadratics. So up until now, you have solved a quadratic by factoring. Okay, so if you had maybe x minus 3 and x plus 2 is equal to 0, then you would know that the, the two solutions are 3 and a negative 2. So that was kind of what we did at the beginning of the chapter. The next one would be if you take a root. So if you maybe had x squared is equal to 9, and I take the square root of both sides, then you would get x is equal to plus or minus 3. And there are those two solutions. And then what we've done the last couple of days is solving by completing the square. Okay, so I'm not going to go back and review that method because we just finished that method. All right, there are times though when these three methods aren't effective. Okay, so if that's the case, if these three methods really don't work, or if the math would be difficult, then we can use the quadratic formula. And I'm sure you have seen it before, but I'm going to give it to you again. And that is x is equal to a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and then all over 2a. If we have a quadratic, I'm supposed to have two solutions. The two solutions are generated by the plus and the minus. Okay. All right, so if you'll remember, a quadratic in its standard formula is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And then these are the values, the a, the b, and the c, that get substituted into that formula. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do these by hand and then how to do this math in your calculators which is helpful if you had one at home, so you could practice at home. Otherwise, you'll just have to manage it at school. All right, so here's our first example, and it wants you to solve, and I'm going to solve by using the quadratic formula, and I have x squared plus 3x is equal to 2. The first thing that you need to remember, you cannot solve a quadratic unless there's a 0 on one side, so I'm going to take the 2 to the other side, and this is going to become x squared plus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. I know that a is going to be 1, b is 3, and c is a negative 2. All right, so if I start substituting those values into my formula, one of the easiest ways to learn a formula is by writing it every time that you use it. So there's that formula written. Now I'm going to substitute in my values. So I have a negative 3 plus or minus a 3 squared minus 4 times a times c and then all over 2 times 1. And I'm going to do as much math as I can by hand and then I will get out my grapher. So now I have a negative 3 plus or minus 3 squared is 9 4 times 2 is 8, all over 2. 
So this is a negative 3 plus or minus radical 17 over 2. Because we're doing the quadratic formula, you actually need to get your two solutions. So I'm going to write this over here so my calculator won't be in the way. Radical 17 over 2. So now I'm going to do this in my calculator. All right, and I'll show you a cool shortcut with your calculator. Okay, um, let's see if I can get that in there so you can see it. There we go. All right, so I'm going to clear all that math. I'm going to enter my equation into my calculator. So first I'm going to start with the parentheses for the numerator. I'm going to do a negative 3 plus, then the square root of 17, close the top, divided by 2, and then I hit enter. And when I do that, I got that x was equal to 0 0.562, always rounding to the third decimal place. A cool trick on your calculator to bring this right back up, because everything's the same except for that sign, is if you do second enter, it brings the previous operation right back up. I can go to here and change that to a minus, and then hit enter, and there's my second value. So my second value was a negative 3.562, and those would be my two solutions for that quadratic, okay? Again, my cool little shortcut is once you have it entered the first time, all you have to do is hit second enter. It brings it right back up. Go over and edit the positive to a negative, and then you're good to go. All right, so let's do another example. And actually, before I go on to that other example, I want to show you another trick on our calculator because we need to start talking about what this looks like graphically. Because I could find two x-intercepts, I'm going to show you what this would look like if I put it in my calculator. And so I'll kind of do it right here. If I put this into my calculator, x squared plus 3x minus 2, my graph would look something like I have an x-intercept at a negative 3.562 and then one at a positive 0 0.562. So my 5, 6, 2 and then my graph would look something like that. So let me show you what that looks like in your grapher. Okay, so I think there's my grapher. I'm going to go to my y equals button, and I'm going to clear all the stuff that I had there, and then I'm going to enter my equation. So I had x squared, and then plus 3x, and then minus 2, and I'm going to do a zoom 6, and there's my graph. Noticing that this is the negative 3.562 and this is the 0 0.562, all right? So that would be what my graph of that particular quadratic looked like. There is a way to find these values in your calculator, but I'm not going to show that to you yet. All right, now let's move on to our next example, okay? Let me turn the page in my notes. All right, so here's your next example. Again, this is going to say to solve, okay? And we're going to solve by the quadratic formula again. And I have 25x squared minus 18x is equal to 12x minus 9. Before you can do any quadratic work, I need everything on the left-hand side. So this is going to be 25x squared minus 18x minus 12x plus 9 is equal to 0. If I simplify the middle, I get x squared minus 30x plus 9 is equal to 0. Okay? This would be hard to factor because when I did, if I did a times c, I would get a big number. So instead, we're going to do the quadratic formula. I'm going to do x is equal to a negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If I substitute my values in, I'm going to get a negative, negative 30, plus or minus a negative 30 quantity squared minus 4 times 25 times 9 all over 2 times the 25. Okay, I'm the only number that I'm going to actually simplify is that very first number plus or minus 
and then I have 30 squared because two negatives is always going to be a positive minus 25 times 4 is 100 times 9 and then I'm going to divide by 50 and I'm just going to put it all into my calculator from here so I'll scoot this over bring up my grapher so I'm going to enter my whole numerator in parentheses I'm going to do 30 plus the square root of 30 squared minus 100 times 9 close for the quadratic or sorry the square root close for the numerator divided by 50 and I'm going to hit enter okay and I'm going to get 0 0.6 if I want to leave it as a fraction I would math frac it and I get 3 fifths so I'm going to get x is equal to 3 fifths so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that previous operation back up. So I'm going to do second enter, and then I'm going to do second enter again to go back one more step. I'm going to go and change that to a negative, and then hit enter. And then I got, oops, I changed the wrong, no, that's correct. I changed the same sign. And notice I got the same value, okay? So I got a second three-fifths. So, oops, three-fifths. So what that means is that if this is my graph and that is 3 fifths, that my parabola just kisses the x-axis. So it only has one point of intersection. So then let me show you that if I graph our equation. And I'm going to go back and graph it from here, okay? Because that's where we had put everything on the left-hand side. So I'm going to enter y is equal to 25x squared minus 30x, where's my x, plus 9. So there's my 25x squared minus 30x plus 9. And I'm going to do a zoom 6. And there comes my graph. All right, and just so you can see it a little bit better, I'm going to zoom in. I'm doing a zoom 2. And I'm going to zoom in right there on my vertex. And there's my graph, okay? Alrighty, so that would be my two solutions. This is called a kiss. It just touches the x-axis one time, and notice that that value is repeated. That's actually a three, really bad math, okay? Alrighty, so now let's do another example. Okay, so I have another one. Again, I'm going to solve using my quadratic formula. So I'm going to have a negative x squared plus 4x is equal to 5. Before I can do anything, I need to move the 5. So this is a negative x squared plus 4x minus 5 is 0. Okay. Now I'm going to do my quadratic formula. So a negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is a negative 4 plus or minus b squared, so 4 squared minus 4. There's my a. My a is just a negative 1. And then my c is a negative 5 all over 2 times a negative 1. If I keep simplifying, this is a negative 4 plus or minus 16 minus 20 because three negatives is negative divided by a negative two and so this simplifies to be a negative four plus or minus the square root of a negative four all over a negative two and if you'll remember from what we've done the last week or so this is going to be a negative four plus or minus two i over a negative two and I'm running out of room, I could simplify a little bit more. This is 2 plus or minus i, and that's my solution. But here's what this does to the graph. Because I got a complex number, that means that there are no x-intercepts, which means it's not going to cross the x-axis. So I'll just draw you a little sketch. So that means that my parabola is going to be floating in space and it's never going to cross the x-axis. Alright, so let me show you that on our grapher. 
So I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to enter this equation. And I'm going to enter it from here. So I'm going to enter a negative x squared and I'm using the negative, not subtract, plus 4x and then minus 5. So there's my equation and I'm going to do a zoom 6. And notice what happened to my parabola. The negative turns it upside down. Okay, there are no x-intercepts, which verifies the answer that we got, which said that x was equal to plus 2 plus or minus i. So if I leave this here so you can see it, I would say that x is equal to 2 plus or minus i, and if I were to actually draw my graph, then I would draw that. And I could actually find the vertex if I wanted, but the vertex does not touch the x-axis and I have no x-intercepts. So anytime you have an imaginary number as part of your solution for x, there are no x-intercepts, okay? All right, so that's kind of an example of three different types of parabolas, solving all of them by using the quadratic formula. All right, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is something called the discriminant. And here's where the discriminant comes from. If you have your quadratic formula, so negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, so that's my quadratic formula, this portion right here is called the discriminant. And what the discriminant tells you is how many solutions and then what kind. Okay, so it tells me how many solutions I'm going to have for my quadratic and what type of solution they are. So here's the way we would use that. If b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, Remember, that just means that it's positive. That means, then, that I am going to have two real solutions. And that means that I'm going to have two x-intercepts. So that means that my parabola, regardless of whether it's pointing up or down, is going to cross the x-axis twice. Okay, so that's what that means. If my discriminant, which is the b squared minus 4ac, is equal to 0. That means it's going to have one real solution, and it's going to have one x-intercept, and this was our kiss. This is when it touches the x-axis one time, regardless of whether the parabola points up or points down. The last type we're going to have is b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, which means it's negative. And if you look back at your formula, if this is negative, what I'm going to end up with are imaginary solutions. So I would have two imaginary solutions, and I'm going to have no or none x-intercepts because imaginary solutions are not on the x-axis. All right, so then I'm going to do a couple of examples of the discriminant for you. So here's the first one. It says find the discriminant. And then it says tell how many and what kind of solution. Oops, what kind of solution? Okay. All right, so for my first one, I'm going to have x squared minus 8x plus 17 is equal to 0. So if I find my discriminant, it's going to be the b squared minus 4ac. So that's going to be a negative 8 squared minus 4 times a times c. If I simplify that math, I'm going to get 64 minus 68. Notice that that's going to be a negative number, so this is a negative 4. 
That means that I'm going to have two imaginary solutions. I'm not finding them at this point. I just want to know what type of solution they're going to be. And there are going to be no, that's a no, x-intercepts. And so this is my discriminant. And then this tells me what type of solutions I'm going to have. All right, so let's do another example. Looks very similar. x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to 0. If I find my discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac, that's going to be a negative 8 squared minus 4a and c. Simplify that math. 64 minus 64, and I get 0. That means that I'm going to have one real solution. And I'm going to put my um, D for discriminant equals. And I know that it's going to have one x-intercept, which is a kiss. Okay. And my phone's ringing, so it's just going to have to wait. All right. The last example that I'm going to do for you is one more with the discriminant. Sorry, you get a little bit of mood music listening to my phone. There's the 8x plus 15 equals 0. My discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So that's going to be a negative 8 squared, then minus the 4, a, and c. If I simplify that math, I get 64 minus 60. So that simplifies to be 4. So my discriminant is 4. That tells me I'm going to have two real solutions. And I'm going to have two x-intercepts. All right. So that is your new information for the day. Let me give you your problems. You're going to have five today. So the first two, say, or sorry, the first three are going to say solve using the quadratic formula. So we're going to start by solve using the quadratic formula. All right, so that's what you're going to do on the first three. So the first one says x squared is equal to 6x minus 4. Your second one is going to be 4x squared minus 10x is equal to 2x minus 9. Remember that you have to take everything to the left on both of those. And then the third one is going to be 7x minus 5x squared minus 4 is equal to 2x plus 3. Remember on this one to put all of your terms on the left hand side and then make sure that you put it in order so that you get your a, your b, and your c in the correct location. Alright, for your last two you're going to find the discriminant and then you're going to determine How many solutions and what kind? Just like I did in the examples, okay? And then you're also going to want to talk about um, your x-intercepts, just like I did in the example. So how many x-intercepts do you have? All right, so problem number four is going to be 2x squared plus 4x minus 4 is equal to 0. The fifth one, 4x squared plus 3x plus 12 is equal to 3 minus 3x. So those are your five problems. Good luck. I'm hoping that eventually you will get a calculator to use at home because it really makes this math easier. All right, good luck doing your problems.